One of my favorite techniques is providing a list view filtering feature. So as you type, it searches the database for matches. So if I typed a J, it would do a search on a J. If I then followed it up with an O, it would search for J-O, and so on and so on. In order to get this accomplished, we're going to create a global field. So we'll go into Manage Database, call it X Search. Create that as a text field and global. Now a lot of people like to take their global fields and put it into a globals table because global fields don't require any relationships to be used anywhere in the file. And yes, I've done that before, but with the advent of variables and things like that and other techniques, I don't find myself creating as many global fields as I did before. And so putting them inside the table where there shouldn't really be a lot of fields anyhow doesn't really clutter it up much for me. And sometimes I go back and forth and decide differently. It's, it's kind of a, a spiritual, philosophical thing and deciding how you like to work, I think, at that point. But some global fields do have to be inside the table because they're used in a relationship. So it kind of gets, you know, it's, you haven't seen me do it here, but I, you know, I, I, I would sometimes, if I was going to know I was going to have a lot of global fields, put them into a, a separate table. But for here, I'm not doing it. And it's really up to you. So we'll click OK, go to layout mode grab our field, put it on the layout. Doesn't need to be very big, but we'll make it a little bit bigger. That looks good. And probably put placeholder text in here. Enter search criteria. That looks good. And then we'll go into our script workspace. We'll create a new script called, let's say find list view. That seems to describe it pretty well. And we could do this, enter find mode, right? Turn that off, do a set field, start with the first field, which would be probably name first. And then we could go ahead and say, okay, well I'm going to put in whatever's inside that X search. And then we'll duplicate that make it name last and go all the way down that list of all the fields it needs to search and of course these all have to be on new record requests here right but this gets to be very static I like something more adaptive and if the layout changes then I have to change the script so let's go ahead and try something else we'll try perform find or perform quick find and so all we have to do is provide X search in there as a search criteria. We'll save this. And then what we'll do is look at how we can control on the layout what it searches. So you can see all these green magnifying glasses on here. If you don't have show quick find turned on, then they'll be gone. So make sure you choose that and turn it on. And then you can see, oh, well, I don't want it to search the work phone. That doesn't seem right. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And these merge fields, the account create and, and, and date, timestamp create and stuff, all of that, you don't want that search. So just come down, select them, and exclude them, and you'll see the little magnifying glasses go away. And sometimes you'll see a, an orange magnifying glass. That just means it's going to search that field slowly because it's an unstored calculation or a related field. So you can see how we can control this layout by layout and do some pretty cool stuff. Because remember, it's going to work on every single table, so if we do that, Guess what? We're going to have to have all those different fields we want to search in there. This gets to be a little bit easier here. So we can come in here and then come in and modify our script here. Uh, well, maybe we don't. Maybe this is all we need. I think at least for starters, we can try this out. So let's click on this, go to set script triggers. And the first thing you're thinking on object keystroke, perfect, right? As we type each key, run that. Okay, let's try it out. So we'll come in here in the find list view, go back to browse mode, and let's try it out. You can see our little placeholder there. I need a little bit more room, so we'll make it bigger. You can see when I type the J in there, it doesn't actually enter it. It's running the script right now. That's because it's a pre-trigger. That means that as soon as I click OK and the script's done, it finally puts the J in there. So that's why it gave us that weird message. And if I delete this, then it's going to do the search on John or J, and you can see all the J's. You can see the found set of 25. So you've got to go ahead and and you know figure out a way to get around this so that it doesn't do that. And the way to get around that is to not use that script trigger. 
because it runs the script first. Let's make this a little bit bigger. What we actually want is to use on object modify because it runs the script after the event. So that's a much better choice here. So let's try it out and let's see what happens. So if I type in a jam, I'm just going to highlight and type it in again and then I'm going to type in O. Whoops, I'm going to make sure I go back to the field. That's another change we'll need to make. But you can see as I click into it and type, it'll keep filtering it. Pretty cool, it happens very quickly. So in order to fix it in this realm, we're going to have to go ahead and do a go to field, right? Now the problem with go to field is I can certainly specify this field, but it's going to be a different table occurrence at the beginning for each table I do it in, invoices and so on. So a better choice here would be to use go to object. And so we'll say quick find. How about that? Sounds like a good name for it. I'll select it, click OK, save it, close it, go to layout mode, make sure I click on this and name that field, paste it in there, take the quotes out, we don't need those. And that should get us back to where we want to be. So let's try it out. If I type an H, you can see that I can type the next letter right after it. So it keeps getting back into that field for me. So it doesn't even seem like it's you know doing anything that's not leaving that field. Pretty cool stuff. Let's add on to this and see what we can do. Now what we need to do is check for any kinds of errors that happen after that. So let's see what kinds of errors could occur. Well probably we have no records found and probably also or I should say no find criteria and then well we still uh, yeah so we have the no records f matches find criteria and then no find criteria. I got them reversed there. So let's put in the standard tests here. We'll put in our if statement get found count equals zero. If that's true show custom dialog Again, we're going to want this to be adaptive, so we're going to say no, and we'll say proper table name, and that looks pretty good. I just need an ampersand in there. Copy that to the clipboard, and then put ampersand were found. Not a very complex message here. Oops, did I make a mistake here? Ah, need to have the quote there, and the quote there, and then a space there, and then we can take that out, and then we can also change this to lower. There we go. And then we'll do an else if get last error equals 400, just like we've done before. In that case, what I'm going to choose to do is show all records. Seems like the makes sense to show all records of no criteria in there. And then of course we'll need at the top our perform script and then we'll do the set error capture. Put this one right below it and I believe offline I changed the set error capture to on so it's going to actually for the developer show us what it would look like for a regular user. So let's save all here and we'll come in and try it out. So I'll type in a J. O. H. So that works great, right? Put in something it can't find. No records match this find criteria. Okay, so we got a little error message there. I'm not sure why. Let's take this stuff out. And we got an error message there. Well, that's interesting. wonder what that's all about. Let's turn the script debugger on it. And type in a letter. Okay, we'll hit play so it goes all the way through. Looks good. Delete that or make sure the script debuggers kind of get in the way. And then you'll notice that we get no error here. So perform find or perform quick finds a little bit different than what we normally done. So what I could do is come in here and get rid of this first and put in here is empty and then we'll come in and just so I can do it more easily. I know it's there. you didn't like that. I gotcha. And come down here and put X search. That would work as an alternative because that's the same situation. So I'll work and then we'll show all records. 
So let's see what happens here. So we'll type in the J, works great. I still get this error message though, and I don't really like that. And let's see what's, you know, if we can fix that. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to have to change this perform quick find to an enter find mode. And then we'll do a set field. Specify the target of name first. And then do X search. And then we'll duplicate that. And we'll just go with name last also. We could do the rest of them later on. There we go. And then put a new record request in between them. And then put in a perform find here. Let's see if we get any better results here. So we'll save that. Type in the J. We get the same result. Delete it. We don't get the error message because it's capturing it. And if we type in something it can't find, ZZ, no customers were found. And then again, as soon as we do that. So I kind of went back and forth on which feature to use. And I found out that I really couldn't get the quick find to work. So I'm going to have a little bit more work on here because I'm going to have to test which table I'm in. But I have to do it. There's no choice, right? So we're going to say table name 2 equals customers. That's the case. Then do this stuff, right? And then we'll do an else if, copy that, put it in there, say invoices, and put in the criteria you want for that one. And it's going to be a little bit longer, less adaptive, but really don't have much choice here. So what I'll do offline is fill all this stuff in so it works. You'll want to do products as well. But we already have a dynamic adaptive message, so we don't have to worry about that. So it should work great here.